My name is Shikib Mohammed, a pediatric neurologist in Sydney, Australia, and I'm pleased to present to you the findings of our study on magnetic resonance imaging pattern recognition in childhood bilateral basal ganglia disorders. This was a collaborative study from various colleagues internationally looking at a cohort of 201 children from 34 different diagnostic categories, further supplemented by a literature review to make up a total of 93 different diagnostic categories that can lead to children presenting it with bilateral basal ganglia changes on MRI. The basal ganglia are deep-seated gray matter structures within the brain. Why is it important to recognize patterns? It is important because they can be involved in very common disorders such as birth injury due to cerebral palsy or connectress. And recognizing those patterns can save unnecessary and expensive investigations. They can also be involved in some disorders that have a unique pattern that are genetically determined but may be important to know about in terms of proper prognostication or even treatment such as with thymine supplementation or chelation of copper. Our study included children with bilateral basal ganglia changes already present on MRI and then tried to attempt differentiation based on patterns seen in other brain regions. On cluster analysis, we found that our cohort of 201 patients segregated into four different groups based on changes in different brain regions. The largest group consisted of children who had T2-weighted hyperintensities in the pitamen, including cerebral palsy due to birth injury in term infants, but also rarer disorders like biotin thymine responsive basal ganglia disease. To further navigate patterns within each cluster, we provide you a roadmap via an algorithm and an electronic app, as well as some other details in the paper. A separate group of disorders, including birth injury due to carnictrus, but rarer metabolic disorders, grouped together because of T2-weighted hyperintensities in the globus pallidus in contrast to the striatum. Other than T2-weighted hyperintensities, some disorders grouped together in cluster 2 because they had increased susceptibility on MRI, and these included classic brain ion accumulation disorders like MPAN. But it is important to note that a similar pattern can be noted in various other disorders, including NBIA mimics like fucosidosis, those with basal ganglia calcification, or those with other metal depositions that can lead to striatal susceptibility, such as Wilson's disease, or newer disorders that have monogenic associations and can mimic NBIA disorders. A very unique pattern was noted in children who had basal ganglia, particularly palatal diffusion restriction, along with changes on T2-weighted imaging and diffusion imaging in the brainstem and the cerebellum. And these children had vigabatrin toxicity. Lastly, children who had manganese deposition in the brain due to genetically determined transportopathies had a very bright T1-weighted signal in the basal ganglia, but also elsewhere in the brain. And you will see that this is contrasted with the lesser intense T1 signal seen in some other disorders. We provide you with a proposed diagnostic algorithm to help you get started on navigating MRIs when you see bilateral basal ganglia changes. In addition, my colleague Dr. Andrew Piggin will talk through how to download and use a prototypic electronic application that also contains some clinical information for each disorder reviewed as part of our study. To download the app, you can go to kidsneuroscience.org.au. From here, you can download the actual file, as well as leaving any comments and feedback. But to get started, hit MRI findings, and then click the present or absent features of your particular MRI scans. You can click the Get Differential Diagnosis button to obtain a list in order of all the likely diagnoses that meet your criteria. If this list is particularly long, you can scroll through it in the top window. From the pop-up window, you will find an alphabetical list of the corresponding diagnoses, and these can be clicked on to provide some extra information relevant to the diagnosis selected.